Mini episode 1036 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello, everyone. Welcome to FDH Lounge mini episode number 1036. This is FDH managing partner Rick Morris here for one of the great segments that we do every year. We were joking about this off air. Uh, Jim Nance might say a tradition like none other, but it is the annual post-Emmys recap on the show with our good friend, John Bastow, fitness and pop culture expert. Of course, you can find him at John Bastow on Twitter. Of course, fitnessmadesimple.com, where you can go get his uh, wonderful book, uh, as I happen to have, which is a very useful one. For all things fitness and pop culture, and usually on this show when we have him on, it's pop culture, and it's usually recapping something like this. The 2018 Emmys. Great to have you back on, John. I have been looking forward to this. Uh, Thank you for making time for us. Well, I have to, as, as you pointed out. It is a tradition, and when the tradition comes a call, and you cannot say no. The door is always open. <laughs> well, a man of lesser character might perhaps, but not you, John Bastow. You never would, and uh, we, we appreciate that. Do not take it for granted. And uh, this is one of these things where, again, in, in checking out what happened, I know a lot of times... Mm-hmm. We kind of tend to start by, by looking at stuff with the red carpet, and uh, as, as I generally confess to you uh, when we do these things here, I have to do some catch-up research on this kind of thing, because whether it be the Emmys, the Oscars, whatever, not necessarily my cup of tea. Talking about it with you is, but the actual thing itself, I generally have to do catch-up research after the fact. So I'm going to read off to you some some comments from the red carpet here, courtesy of USA okay. Today, that I thought were some of the more interesting ones. Uh, Alexis Bledel, they said that her dress oh looked like she went to a bat mitzvah, so <laughs> I thought that was yeah, interesting. Yeah, or, or, or basically found a, found a collection of uh, old scarves in a, uh, a trunk and then decided just to put them all on at once. Okay. <laughs> uh, Claire Foy, uh, they said it looked like she had a uh, modified bed sheet of sorts, which I couldn't really argue with looking at the picture. <laughs> They had the uh, the bed sheet like expanded to make it even like bigger, so it looked like it completely engulfed her like a cocoon. <laughs> it would have been nice if they put like ruffles on the bed sheet, like you might perhaps see in a fancy hotel or something. That would be kind of funny. Uh, Connie Britton, I think this was a, meant to be a compliment. Uh, they said it looked like she was headed to a luau in that dress. Well, first, well, first of all, Claire Foy can laugh at everyone going back just one, yeah, because she won an award. So That's once true. you win an award, I don't care if you go in saran wrap and toilet paper, you are a winner in every 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 aspect of the awards, you're a winner. You walk home with a statue, you just won, period. And <laughs> Connie Britton, uh, ever since Nashville, can do no wrong. So once again, there's a lady who can basically wear a garbage bag, and I'll say best dress. Uh, exactly. Well... Yeah, but it, that's maybe maybe not a garbage bag. That's just me personally with my bias because I loathe Bill Belichick, and he basically wears like a modified garbage bag for training camp in the summers. I've always joked about wanting to set that garbage bag on fire. So that's just me personally, my Bill Belichick hatred. But other than that, yes, I would agree with you about Connie Britton. She is awesome, and uh, Dion Cole. He was judged to be by the USA Today critic in something of a pajamas tuxedo, which is an interesting mashup. Oh, I know. Okay, uh uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Your thoughts on him? Um, got up on the wrong side of the bed and just decided (laughs) to keep going. (laughs) You know what I want to know? Was there footies on that mofo? They needed to pan the camera down. That's actually a good, oh, that's that's a good, that's a good comeback too. Uh, You know, pajamas, a onesie. Uh, you have, uh, there, there's so many outfits that are going, a lot of times I think, like we talked about this before one time, but I think some of them honestly go to be on the best, the worst dress, because a lot of times people, unless you're super stellar, and even if you are super stellar in a good way, the worst one is still going to be remembered more than you. Um, That's true. And the thing is, I think they just go there, I mean, the, there was one lady uh, in particular, 
Kaepernick, who I went, I think, uh, went to show her uh, support of Nike and, and Colin Kaepernick. Yes. Um, and they just vilified her on every worst dress list. And the only word I took out of that sentence was every. She was in every article. So <laughs> I mean, that's a win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, she got attention for it. Uh, more about that in a second. But, uh, yeah, I mean, as, as far as it goes uh, with the red carpet and uh, that guy's tux, I, I will say this, that for all the talk that uh, fashion was going to, to bring the, uh, the men's world uh, rompers in the years to come here, I've always said, see, that's, that's, I'm, the per- I'm the perfect target audience for something like that. I'm a shameless guy. I would wear that to, like, my fantasy football draft or something just to get some laughs. I mean, I would wear a men's romper. I don't know about most way. people. Yeah. Oh, 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 a romper. Yeah, a romper. I, I would I would wear one of those. Like A romper is such an unfortunate clothing choice. I mean, I, I think, honestly, uh, I always say that, um, you know, the skinny jeans are a tool of the devil or a creation of the devil <laughs> because I think that, honestly, no, this is for a man, not a woman. I think right. some women will grade in skinny jeans. I have never seen, and I will go on record as saying, I have never seen a man look good in skinny jeans. I think that they all look terrible, personally. And That's I just, true. I, maybe I just hate that look. The other piece of clothing I would put in that same category as a creation or machination of the devil is the romper. A romper is a very, very hard outfit with the little shorts. It's like a onesie. It's like a short onesie almost, and it's very, very hard to pull off. It all depends on your sense of humor, though, because a lot of times I sort of like to do the class clown kind of thing. So I'm, I'm looking ahead yeah. here to, like, you know, my uh, my niece's birthday party. I'm oftentimes in town when she's uh, having that. Like, I, I could see wearing that and just horrifying everybody at the birthday party. <laughs> well, you, but you just, like, you, you just validated what I said, man. I could see wearing that and horrifying everyone at the birthday party. That's exactly right. Right, again, right. It's creation of the devil. Well, yeah, it's like, it, but you got to be doing it for laughs. You you cannot be yeah. wearing it unironically. You have to wear it ironically, yes, I, and that's how I, I saw wear it. Somebody one, I saw somebody one time wearing a. Um, it was like a like a, a deep blue velvet velveteen rabbit type of romper. <laughs> it honestly looked like you combine the romper <laughs> with like. King Louis the Fifteenth or something like that with that weird collar thing he had because it had like an extended collar to it. But I'll tell you one thing: the guy turned heads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the wrong reasons, but the heads were turned. Well, that's a that's a real say what you will proviso on that one, isn't it? <laughs> but uh... and believe it or not, he was in Seven Eleven. No more kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag 7-Eleven Chronicles. Oh. oh, that stuff is gold. We've got to put him in 7-Eleven. He should have been in 7-Eleven. He was actually, he was actually at what are they, some sort of fancy event, too. I'm sure he was doing it just to get photographed. Uh, but it was some sort of, I think it was a polo or something in the Hamptons. Uh-huh. It was just bizarre. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned about uh, getting attention here with a Colin Kaepernick uh, shout-out on yes. the red carpet. There's a couple of things for getting attention here subsequently uh during the awards so one thing is that and again i can't fault you for your your guess on this one being incorrect on on twitter because most people had it that way the donald glover thing of course that was not donald glover as teddy perkins bring that up yeah yeah i was going with what everybody else said and it was not even though he i think he was dressed as that character in the show it was somebody else dressed as that character yeah um who gave, uh, who gave, who was it again, I mean, a big hug when he walked by. Um, I don't, I don't uh, remember Bill reading Hader, about Bill Oh, Hader. okay. Bill Hader, who beat Donald Glover in the award, got a big hug <laughs> from Teddy Perkins, who everybody thought was Donald Glover, dressed as Teddy Perkins, myself included, because he was sitting in sure. Donald Glover's seat. Sure, And, but Donald Glover, uh, and, and once again, we don't really know which is the truth. It just so happened that there was a picture taken, the only fact is, there was a picture taken after the fact yes. at some party or something of Donald Glover with somebody else dressed as Teddy Perkins. That could simply have been Donald Glover also without the makeup on and somebody else put in the makeup to make it even a double story. It could I have been. Look at, I always say follow the dollar and follow the media coverage. And to get double coverage, it's like, ooh, Donald Glover's Teddy, per- Teddy Perkins, Teddy Perkins, all over uh, Twitter. And then all of a sudden have a picture of him next to Teddy Perkins and say, oh, no, now Donald Glover's not. Look, we were wrong. Yeah. You know, it's, just, but, it's very easy for Donald Glover to take that makeup off and just shove it on somebody else. That's the whole prosthetic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, what a what a brilliant thing on their part to do that as far as, uh, you know, raising attention for the show. Dude. You know, He's yeah. a clever dude. He is. He is. Donald Glover... 
cross-platform and whatever is, is one of the smartest promoters out there uh, in, in the entire business. And, and you, you throw the music business into that as well. Donald Glover uh, knows what he's doing as far as getting his stuff out there. And I, have, I always joke about this, that I am easily the whitest person in America who watches Atlanta. And uh, I know I'm not the target audience for it, but I do enjoy that show. No question, John. Me too. Yeah, it's it's all well. I, I also I always respect Donald Glover because, um, and I would this is the one one thing I would do as well is uh, he when he was winning some awards I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, um, but he was he, when he won some awards for Atlanta when it first came out um, he wore a purple tux, cool like a plum deep purple tux to the uh, to the award show, and that is something I would do because purple is my color and that is the color of royalty. And everybody talked about him having it, and a lot of good things actually were said about it, and some some bad as well. But he'll always hold a special place in my mind because of that. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, that, that guy's got uh, amazing uh, promotional instincts, no question about it. He is a clever, clever guy. But when it comes to getting attention... That's why I'm saying you're going to have to prove to me that that was not a, a, a bait and switch there to get double stories. I still think it could have been Donald Glover dressed as Teddy Perkins uh, in the first one as well. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. It may have been. It may have been. That would be truly uh, amazing uh, if he if he did manage to pull it off. Story, the reveal, yeah. a third story. There well, yeah, go. yeah. I uh, get a, get a third news cycle out of it, but uh, there there was an attention grabbing uh, stunt here, which has garnered multiple uh, news cycles since then. And here's uh-huh. the thing, and, and I understand you're probably going to fart on me for being a Grinch uh, when I bring this up, but I have to say again, okay. I'm I'm always somebody who in any circle of life, whenever I'm looking at any kind of an event, I am always somebody who casts a disapproving eye at somebody trying to make something about them. I will admit a lot of my grouchiness over the years has come from being a Cavs fan and seeing all these reporters try to make themselves the story by getting LeBron to say something and, you know, hey, maybe I can get a job at the New York Times if I get LeBron to admit how much he hates his teammates, you know, but I don't like people who make themselves the story. The Glenn Weiss thing, we can look at this and we can say, oh, this is the most uh, you know, heartwarming thing oh, yeah. of all time the, 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 to do the proposal there. And I, 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 I almost can't argue with that side of it, but there's, there's another part of me that says, this is the gr- biggest gravy training thing to make yourself a famous name that I've ever seen. I mean, I, I'm caught somewhere in between those two things here. How do you see it? Um, I go with the results. Uh, that that's the man who directed the Oscars and has been behind the scenes in in many many ways. And there are many directors who like to be, you know, what I call kingmakers in the sense of um they like to be behind the scenes. They don't want to be the stars in front and be the center of the story. They just want to be the best director and be phenomenally known for their craft. Yeah. Um. I I believe it's very. I think if I was ever a director, I'd have a very very hard time. Uh, seeing all my stars get the publicity, and even though, and then I would always be taking a back seat to that, except for people in the industry that would say, "Oh, he's the director; that's wonderful." But for the general public, ninety-nine percent of the population, they don't really care. Um, so that being said, um, I, if he wanted to gain the spotlight, if he wanted to do, and it was a very, very nice gesture. I don't care if it was pandering or whatever, or making himself the center of the story. He did make himself the center of the story, and he won. So I go by the results, and I think it was fine. And if, if his intention was just to uh, propose and make a spectacular moment for his wife to be his fiance, he did that. And if his mo- if his motive was to make himself the center of attention for the first time in front of the camera and not just behind the camera, he won there also. So double winner. I will say this: I did subsequently read a story on page six, which I thought was hysterical. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of uh, Broadway people that are pissed off because when this guy has directed the Tony Awards, he gives strict instructions: do not go over your time allotment. Whatever you do, don't 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 go long. Don't take other people's time. Meanwhile, he's up there for multiple minutes yammering on doing his own proposal. So there's a lot of people. And what did I, and what did I just say? The spotlight is <laughs> the biggest. If, if you have any addiction to it at all, yeah. The spotlight is the biggest drug and the most amazing drug there is so whatever you say is totally different than what you're going to do when the spotlight is on you yeah well a a real do as i say not as i do from uh, glenn weiss there but yeah i mean you know uh as they say scoreboard because yeah he did get himself over he's gotten himself to be famous 
out of this. And, uh, and, he, has a perfect, and he has a perfect alibi, too, because anybody who says it was grandiose showmanship like you're talking about, he can always fall back on. Uh, this was a, a magical moment that my fiance, future wife, will never forget, and I did it for her. Whether it's true or not, it's a great story, and it's a, it's a great thing to fall back on, whether it was driven by ego or not. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that is uh, that that is hands down the greatest thing that women exist for is using them as an excuse for things. So you know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I had to do it because of her. You know, I mean, who among us hasn't said that at one time or another? So you know. I hear him on that one, but this is a thing where, uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about some of the specifics here with the ceremony, but big picture-wise, again, this was one where every year you kind of get the whole excuse thing of like, well, it's a shrinking media universe as far as people watching the same thing, but, you know, this, this was a thing where uh, the ratings on this thing went down yet again this year. And again, there's any number of factors, because in, in my estimation, I mean, yeah, maybe people were curious to see how big of a... Uh, a, a thing Game of Thrones would rack up and they did their usual strong business but I don't know if there was any big hooks out there for the mainstream to sink its teeth into but by the same token I also look at this like NBC's got it and you know when you've got I mean no, nothing against Colin Jost and Michael Che because they're good at what they do but I look at it like this I, I, I'm a kind of a hierarchy kind of a guy as far as how I look at things uh, you know, NBC's the only network that's got three primetime shows, Saturday Night Live, of course, being, you know, the third. But to me, they're third on the depth chart behind The Tonight Show and Late Night. You got your third string guys out there hosting the Emmys. So what, what kind of a message does that send? But, 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 but that being said, just one quick thing. That being said, Late Night Tonight, or, or, or Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, beats them all every single year as far as the other talk shows you're talking about. I mean, Saturday Night Live's in the variety sketch category. They've won that. Yeah. But, I mean, the other ones, even though uh, when you're saying NBC, so I don't know, maybe may a distant third compared to the other two premier talk shows, it's, there's another show that, that totally blows them away, like, every year, which always boggles my mind. That's true. That's true, yeah. And that's, again, I'm not going to lay it at their feet that it was soft ratings because of them, but I just, I just wonder if that wasn't NBC sort of lowering their expectations coming in. Uh, but it was, it, 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 that's just a thought. I, I don't know that I necessarily believe that or not, but uh, I, it, it is something I was thinking about. But it's, it, it was sort of a critically panned type ceremony. Uh, I, I didn't see a lot of great reviews for it out there. Uh, it, it was uh, notable for being, again, the, the first of them. I think this is, we're almost up to the, when the Harvey Weinstein thing happened last year. So I think we're up to the last of the, the first one of the Me Too era, the first Emmys as it were. Mm -hmm. So we got that behind us. Now, also, and this was a surprise to some people, a little lighter on politics and Trump bashing than you would have expected for something like this. I have my cynical thoughts on that one there, and that being we're this close to the midterms. I think there's enough people in Hollywood to think there's a blue wave coming. You don't want to piss off the red staters at this point in time. So I think it was kind of tactical on their part. But, you know, in, in terms of uh, what we were led to expect might be the case coming into this versus how it delivered, whenever I kind of crap on any of these things, you generally say, I liked it a little more than that, Rick. So I have a feeling that'll probably be the case again. But what did you think of it? Well, I mean, well, first of all, I am a fan of Saturday Night Live. I like Saturday Night Live. And this was Emmy Awards, the Saturday Night Live edition. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look, everything, it was all about Saturday Night Live. It was Saturday yes. Night Live as far as the hosts. It was Saturday Night Live as far as the band. Warren Michaels was the executive producer. You had uh, those little bits being done with Maya Rudolph and Fred Armisen. Um, you know, Keenan Thompson was, pre was uh, presenting one of the biggest awards for, uh, what was it, Best Drama Series. So it was Saturday Night Live all, all night, all night long, and and I like that. I mean, I like their their sketch comedy. Um, so it was interesting for me, and it was good that they stuck with that part of the theme. And but for people that don't stay up or aren't in on a Saturday night sometimes or watch the replay of that show at eleven thirty at night on Saturdays, you know they're they're not going to get a lot of this, and they're going to say, who are these people, or why are why are there so many of them? Um, you know, which is one of the things I had seen. Uh, whereas, like, normally the Emmys, you'll see uh, all different people doing different aspects, but this had a very, very core Saturday Night Live cast and former Saturday Night Live alums doing all sorts of things throughout the, throughout the sketch. And um, so, th I mean, that was, that was cool. I, I didn't find it particularly, um, I mean, an earth-shattering Emmys, like, uh, or particularly bad Emmys. I thought it was good. I thought it was better than um, a lot of the reviews gave it credit for. 
for. Um, it was definitely watchable, but that's because I liked the people that were presenting and the people that were putting it together. It was, uh, in, in terms of the uh, awards themselves, I, I didn't come across too many reviews that uh, seemed to be that surprised by, by how things shook out. Uh, what did you think in terms of whether you were surprised by any of the big awards or whether you felt anybody got robbed in any of the categories? <laughs> Fair enough. God bless, Mar- God, God bless Marvelous This Is My Veil or whoever, but they walked away with everything. I can't even tell you what channel that's on. Um, yeah. But that's that's fantastic. But actually, I'm glad, I'm, I was glad Saturday Night Live won the Variety Sketch Series. Um, I was especially glad because I watched this series that Darren Chris won for um, American Crime Story, uh, The Assassination of Gianni Versace. I thought he was amazing in that and I actually tweeted um, when the show was going on, he should win all the Emmys or whatever, and, you know, it was great that he, he won that. Um, I mean, I, I think uh, they were just... The other one that was, was a little bit... Um, was really nice to see was just going a little bit of the backstory with Sandy Newton winning for Best Supporting Actress for a Drama for Westworld. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a nice little tug at the heartstrings, I mean, because that woman was very, very invested in that show. Um, I'm just... It, it's just interesting, because there's so... It's so away from back in the day, network TV. I mean, everything that's winning is on either like HBO, Showtime, Netflix, uh, and the Hulu ones are coming up there. Um, it, it, it's all different things, and you're getting next to nothing winning anything at all uh, from the major networks or even the major cable networks lately. Yeah, exactly. And here's the funny thing, too. Outstanding directing for a variety special, to go back to Glenn Weiss there, I mean... I don't even know that I have a memory of something like the Oscars winning something like this. This is like the most meta thing in the world, isn't it? Given that the, the most similar thing to the Emmys is the Oscars, and there's a thing, there's a slot for the Oscars to win in the Emmys, but there's not a slot for the Emmys to win in the Oscars. Why is that? <laughs> that what, what is it? What is it? What is it? Um, Ricky Gervais. This is just these awards are just wonderful. It's all of Hollywood coming back. To- out to pat all of Hollywood in the back and congratulate <laughs> themselves on a year well done. Right, right. And that, uh, you know, I, I will say, too, I mean, as far as people who are uh, deserving, uh, I'm a big John Mulaney fan, uh, so to see him winning for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Special, I thought that was a great yes. one. Yeah. You know, uh, you very very deserving on his part. Uh, he, he is a, uh, a, a great comedic partner of the guy who's probably my favorite uh, person in comedy, Nick Kroll. Uh, and the two of them together, and ironically, I've seen them doing the tag team hosting thing uh, together uh, a few times, and they're very good when they do it together. Uh, again, uh, and Nick Kroll, mm-hmm. fun fact, Nick Kroll, a big Fitness Made Simple fan, I had to do a um, little, uh, some sort of cameo video that they had reached out to me to do for the Nick Kroll show a couple of years ago. Are you kidding me? No. Wow. No. Wow. No. Uh, it was something about uh, their, their production out there, uh, out of... Um, where are they out of their California and uh, are they Comedy Central? I think they're Comedy yeah, Central. Now, um, I yeah, now I watched all. They, I'm a Kroll Show they completist. What? Me to do so. I don't know if they ended up uh, what they ended up doing with it. It was just that they ended up um, you know reaching out and paying me to do a little bit thing for the show that they had wanted. So I don't know where it ended up going, but it was it was a great thing. It was just nice. Out, it was nice out of the blue. Well, I'm a Kroll Show. My Instagram or something like that. I'm a completist. Really nice people. Pro- producer was really nice. Uh-huh. Uh, who had called set up something but he had said oh nick's a big fan or what and uh you know we'd like you to do this little thing if you could just shoot it for us and send it over and I, i'm gonna google this the minute we get done taping because uh I I, I I i watched all of kroll show and and i would i would i would remember it but it's i mean i i hate to i hate to say i don't think it was in there but it's like i i'm sure they Uh-oh. used it in, i'm sure they used it in some form or fashion on some platform they went in, and, and hey, at least you got paid, anyways, right? So there you go. But that's 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 amazing. I I I just uh, the, well, it was just it was just I just I just mentioned it uh, out of the blue as a fun fact because they uh, it just came as a, a an email or I guess to the uh, address on you know the uh, email address on Instagram or one of the social media things, um, just wanting to do something, and then I ended it. Then it went through um, I guess the media person who reads that, and then came to me, and then I ended up speaking with the producer who was a super nice guy. Um, and he explained what he wanted and what they were doing with it, and uh, I said, okay. And I just did it, and I, I was so swamped at that time. I didn't follow up to see what was going on with different things as far as I remember. But yeah, 
That is awesome. Now, I bring it up as a fun fact out of the blue because you mentioned Nick Cole was your guy. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I am a big fan. Uh, I, I would love to meet him someday. And, uh, yeah, that's I am I am so impressed that they reached out to you for that. That is incredible. But, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was thinking of him when I saw – uh, his his partner on here, his his frequent uh, comedy partner Mulaney, who uh, it, it's so funny because uh, my my one partner with FDH, uh, Jason Jones, uh, his favorite comedian is John Mulaney. My favorite comedian is Dick Kroll. So it's hilarious, uh, you know, for as many shows as he and I have done together, uh, that that is the uh, the case. But yeah, it's it's funny too because you mentioned the marvelous Mrs. Mizell. I don't know anything about it either because I don't have Amazon. So. <laughs> It's not even on my radar. I don't, even, but I don't even hear they people talking about the, it. Well, we both said one thing. They won all the awards. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, I, I don't have Amazon, and I have a number of other streaming services. I don't have room for one more, so I'm not likely to get it. So uh, that's uh, something I may not get a chance to see for quite some time. But uh, yeah, a very uh, interesting award ceremony as far as everyone who, who ended up uh, winning here. And uh, again, uh, as as you point out, perhaps there was uh, much more to this than uh, some of the critics had noted uh, in, in in their savage reviews of this year's uh, broadcast. But uh, were there any other aspects of this thing that really kind of caught your eye that we haven't talked about yet? Um, as, actually, you you know you are so thorough with everything that uh, you know we pretty much hit everything that um, I that that caught me as noteworthy um, as far as what was going on with. Uh, Except one thing, one thing, Henry Winkler, congratulations to Henry Winkler, winning, what was it, was it 72, winning his first Emmy? That's amazing. Yes. I had no idea about that stat. That's fantastic. Yes. So, shout out to him. Yes, he, uh, as Gene Cousineau on Barry, which is, uh, again, that's another show I'm unfamiliar with, as I don't have HBO, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm in the, it, it's so funny as I scrolled through that so many of the award winners I'm unfamiliar with, but they ended up beating people from shows that I do watch. So that's kind of interesting. That's what the, that, that is one thing that has been happening as what, that, um, the microcosm of that is the talk show category. How that last week, uh, you know, tonight with John Oliver, so I've also never seen, um, always wins against all the giants. It's, it's, Pretty much, it's like the David that beats all the Goliaths. Right. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, and that's that's happening with me here, because I'm looking at this, like, Atlanta in a couple of different categories got passed over, Ozark, which yeah, I but watched. They, but they won in so many, they, when they first came out, that's yeah. when Donald Glover wore that purple suit and everything, and they took it, so now they're get, now they're just giving it to, to, to some other people. But they, I didn't see them walk away with anything um, of note, as far as in my notes, but I could have missed it. Yeah, that's true, that's true, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking here... Uh, uh, Ozark, uh, that's another show that I've watched that uh, got passed over, Stranger Things. That is a show that some people love. Ozark? That is a show that has diehard fans. Oh, yes. It's really good. I, I enjoy it, and uh, I'm a Jason Bateman guy. I like watching him in different roles. I he's, like him, too. He's one of these like guys, he's he's flexible. He can do comedy, he can do drama, and, and it's definitely a dramatic show, and it's definitely an edge-of-the-seat kind of a thing, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I really enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. I mean, John Mulaney uh, doing something that I liked and watched, that was like one of the only things here that actually won. Because a lot of the other things, I see Glow was nominated in a few things here. I watched and enjoyed Glow, and that didn't end That's up... That's a show that got some buzz. Glow got some buzz with the Gorgeous Lazy of Wrestling. Yeah. That some buzz going on. Yeah, a, uh, it, it's a tremendous show. I really uh, enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, looking through the candidates, it, it, it was uh, a tough... Uh, field in so many of these different categories here uh, with, with the competition that's out there, as you say, and I think that's the story of the Emmys here in the 2010s and going into the 2020s, is, is that you've got this explosion of the critically acclaimed shows on uh, especially the prestige cable networks, but then also the streaming services, and that really seems to be where all of this is going, John, that as, as we're, I mean, we, we've long since gotten past the three major networks day and age, but we're getting to the point in time now where I, I guess my summation on this would be it feels like the weight on the scale is heavily on the side of the prestige networks and the streaming services the, uh, the streaming services even more so it's yeah. leaning even more to it's like the newer is getting the newer the platform the newer the technology the more buzz it's getting because that's even pulling away from some of the others i mean hbo and showtime are still sticking in there 
but they're also once removed from the basic cable platforms because they're they're premium pay cable. But like the basic cables, like I mean, FX is still doing some good, some great stuff. One thing I'm always very interested in and, and, and always intrigued by is how in, I don't think I, I don't ever remember The Walking Dead, which is one of my favorite shows and also probably one of the top shows rated on TV, if not the top show overall on cable. Um, never gets anything. I mean, not even a mention for you, anything. You know what my equivalent of that would be? is, and I don't expect it to be the case, because I think it's the kind of show where, I won't say critics look down on it, but it's not a critical favorite, is Billions. I love Billions, but Billions is not going to get any nominations in something like this, even though it is deserved in some cases. I mean, I I think there are some uh, of the the character, although it it would be interesting, though, because, like, for some of these characters, particularly, like, the, the, you know, it's it's more so a drama than a comedy, but some of the best characters are the background characters, so it would almost have to be best supporting actor in a comedy <laughs> for what their role is. Yeah. Best supporting is still a major award. Right. I'm but, saying they get nothing. It, Walking Dead, I, I've never even seen them getting a mention. Right. It's it's it's. Uh, I think it's the same thing as Hollywood, where, you know, with the Oscars, if you're too big of a movie, sometimes... You know, I think that works against you. There, there, there's a thought that, uh, oh, that movie was too popular and must be a popcorn flick. You know, I, I think there's maybe a little bit of backwards bias that sets in. And, and given that billions... That's a great term. You know, and backwards that's... Backwards bias, I like that a lot. I wonder. I'm just thinking out loud here, yeah, because, like... Billions is best known for being, I think it's probably just about the highest rated show on Showtime. It's certainly the one that gets the most mainstream buzz. So for something like that, as opposed to, but but the thing is, it gets it gets great write-ups from the critics on a regular basis. That's sort of a, but it's interesting. I'm going to lump Billions in with what you're saying about Walking Dead, because yeah, I, I almost think there's a bias about if you're too big, and maybe that's that's what it is. But uh, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say too big, I I, I changed too big to too much of a pop culture splash. Yes, I would agree. It I... if, 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 if it's like, I mean, like, for instance, the, the main cast, even the periphery cast of The Walking Dead, are pretty much treated like gods at Comic Con. Okay. I mean, you know, people will almost think at the at, at the side of Carol, who I also love from The Walking Dead. Right. Um, and, and and stuff like that. So I, 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 the thing is, I think that uh, that works against you when you're going into these awards that are looking for critical acclaim and, you know, tooth and nail clawing in order to, you know, make ends meet and scraping things together and trying to get an audience and trying to make things happen. It, it, it's almost like these people have everything already. Great point. Great point. I'll bet you that's what a lot of that uh, the thinking is behind it on some of the things that get nominated and uh, some of the ones that don't. Uh, but, uh you know, as we go along here and as your uh, multi-platform uh, success continues to mushroom, John, I look forward to the day when we are completely meta and when we are discussing you receiving something at the Emmy Awards. I look forward to it. I'm sure you'll make time for us after that, that happens. <laughs> I would love that. I am actually, once again, fun fact, uh, next week have to go to a, a red carpet premiere of a film that I'm in called Somnium. Uh, this is, I think, going on or what even platform it's going on, uh, but it's uh, it's independently produced film, and I play a crazy southern preacher. Oh, that is... You, you got to give me some details on that, because i got to check this one out. Well, if you go to my IMDb, you'll see that I'm, I've already been in eight or nine movies. So yeah. Like the new one. Okay, the new um, one. Okay. Yeah, this one was fun. This one I got, to, I got to reveal the southern roots and all that stuff and, and got to go back to the southern accent, and that was just a joy. And I was just fire and brimstone with that preacher. See, here, here's the thing that's hilarious to me, is that you're in something like that, and you're not playing yourself in the thing, yet one of our show contributors, my good friend Jake Digman, uh, who, who is not nearly a famous personage on the scale of you, no offense to Jake, he'd be the first to admit that, uh, as somebody who's a non-famous person, he actually did play himself in a movie, the movie Warrior, uh, they needed an MMA ring announcer, which is something he happens okay. to do, and as I'm watching it, John, I'm watching it in the theater, I'm going, oh my God, this is Jake Digman playing Jake Digman, because he was doing all his usual mannerisms and everything. So it was like, this is hilarious. So I'm just juxtaposing this in my head. My, my, my good friend, who is not on your level of fame, has played himself in a film versus you're playing a character in a film. Hollywood is unpredictable. <laughs> well, uh, okay, of the, of the nine, I think it's nine films I've been in now, uh, in one of them, I played myself. Okay. In one of them, I, yeah. 
in, I think, two of them I was a reporter. Um, I think three or four of them were horror uh, movies. You can look on the IMDb. Yes. Them all. But um, three or four of them are horror movies that I do awful things and often die in. Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a few of them out there. <laughs> and, they've been, and they've been on Amazon, and they've been in Redbox, and they've been on Netflix, and all this other stuff. And it's funny, when they first go on there, I'll see in a Google alert or one of these things that the media person gets, you know, and then, then there'll be all these, like, people, like, commenting, oh, my God, it, it, it's John Bates now playing a crazy something, or John Bates now playing, you know, this, this other person who does horrible things to a town, or, or John Bates now playing a reporter. So it's, um, I love it. I, I love it. And, 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 and just another one last fun fact. Yeah. I have never gotten anything I have auditioned for. I don't really audition very much, but I mean, because I hate the process, but every every movie role I've gotten has been a direct booking, which is bizarre. So I've never once gotten anything I've auditioned for, so why bother keep, why, why even keep trying with that? Yeah, that is kind of weird. I'll wait for the direct booking. This one, was a, this one was one of the most fun. It wasn't the longest or the biggest role, but this one um, in the new movie, Somnium, um, is, it is, is bizarre, but anytime I get to go use the Southern accent, I'm happy. That is amazing. I got to check that out. And again, never a dull moment in the life of John Bastow. And uh, again, at John Bastow on Twitter, that is the hub where you can find everything that uh, you are up to, John. And uh, again, uh, checking it out as always here. Uh, Again, always a pleasure to have you on for any of these type occasions. Thank you so much for making time in your busy schedule for us. And uh, I look forward to our next occasion to chat here. I love you, my friend. Uh, next time, you know, Oscars and Emmys are always guaranteed because they are tradition. They come up in, like, everybody's holiday calendar. They are. They are. And if nothing else, uh, th- those are the bookends of the year for you and I. If nothing else, we know we'll get together on those two occasions, and we'll see what else comes up in the course of time as well. Thank you again, John, so much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for FDH Lounge Mini Episode number 1036. As we bring the show to a close, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude to NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, all clear channel affiliates, TNT, TBS, USA, UPN, Deadspin.com, YouTube.com, YTMND.com, MySpace.com, various blogs, Fox News, CNN, CNBC, MSNBC, IamBoard.com, Billboard.com, Google.com, ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, NBA TV, NFL Network, Sports Time Out. Ohio, Athlon Magazine, Comedy Central, Cartoon Network, The Boomerang Channel, QVC, BET, The Spice Channel, Steno Notebooks, Manwich, Papermate Office Supplies, Waitresses, Strippers, Bartenders, Garbage Men, Janitors, Microwave Popcorn, The Writers of The Office, Scrubs, Entourage, My Name is Earl, Oz, Metalocalypse, and The Boondocks, Aquafina, and The Periodic Table of Elements. 